peculiar place to have a party. Oh. You know, Dino, we really shouldn't <coughs> be doing this. After all, we haven't been invited, and curiosity often leads to trouble. Oh, 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 oh. I imagine that right now you're feeling a bit like Alice, tumbling down the rabbit hole. tonight here the super bowl is set and what about taylor swift she does have that concert in tokyo tonight the super bowl matchup is set the 49ers are going to the super bowl the san francisco 49ers and the reigning champs the kansas city chiefs the chiefs beat the 49ers four years ago at the super bowl the 49ers this time are the current favorites but not by much Way in Las Vegas for the first time ever there. The two quarterbacks facing off against each other, Patrick Mahomes for the Chiefs, his fourth Super Bowl in six years. And look at this. They're going to spray this, paint. Uh, I cannot believe this. This is unbelievable. Somebody, somebody needs this is to go in their stomach oh, right now. They are spray painted. Tony, they are It's the only way to go. And what you got to do. They made history as the first all-African-American circus act in U.S. history in December of 1969 after auditioning for the Ringling Brothers Barnum & Bailey Circus outside Madison Square Garden the previous year. And on this day, the community joined City Council member Vanessa Gibson to pay tribute to the King Charles Troop Unicycle Club, founded by the late Jerry King, right here at 170th and Clinton Avenue, where he trained the first generation of unicyclists that included his son, Charles King, and Donald Kiwash Stewart, whose children, including Sheena Stewart Davenport, traveled north from Atlanta to celebrate. I am so proud and so honored and so humbled that this legacy was left. Only one at the time, Stuart Davenport had no idea what her father was up to. The same could be said for Kim Anthony Jones, now director of the King Charles Troop, who in the late 70s joined a friend who was trying out for a sports team. I figured basketball or baseball, so I just tagged along. And uh, to my amazement, we walked into this gym with over 20 plus guys doing all these athletic things on a one wheel bike and including playing basketball. Learning the sport from his father as early as seven years old in this photo seen here, this was the vision of Kings who in 1918 saw a unicycle act and vowed to open the door for African Americans, something he fulfilled through guiding King and other first generation riders like Stewart who in turn taught and mentored others. The 49ers Brock Purdy, the very last pick of the 2022 NFL Draft. I've never been the biggest, the fastest, the strongest, or any of that. I feel like I've always sort of had to fight for what I get and uh, work for what I get. Mahomes saying overnight, we're the underdogs and we're ready. <laughs> Are you not?
not entertain! Is this not why you are here? Tickets for the Super Bowl from seven grand to 90 grand. For halftime, R&B star Usher will perform. But the question tonight, will the other star be there? Travis Kelsey and with Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift on the field with Chiefs star tight end Travis Kelsey. She has yet to confirm if she'll be at the Super Bowl. It turns out she's performing in Tokyo the night before the Super Bowl. But tonight, fans have already calculated her travel time and have determined she could easily make it to Vegas before kickoff. Zena LaVey and Nicholas Shrek are the chief spokespersons for the Church of Satan, and they are the two people you will see me confront during this video. Whether or not you believe in a literal devil, you should be concerned about the plans of LaVey and Shrek to establish a satanically ruled society. This interview was not a debate with my countering the viewpoint put forth by the Church of Satan. The purpose of this video was to divulge information regarding the agenda of the Church of Satan, facts that until now have been cloaked in rumor and contradiction. After seeing this video, I'm sure you will be appalled by the evil teachings of Satanism clearly evident in the statements of LaVey and Shrek. You may wish to use parental discretion for younger children during some parts of this video. And now, the first family of Satanism. We told you about the meltdown some MAGA Republicans are having over the prospect of Taylor Swift endorsing Joe Biden for president. She hasn't. Well, now some Republicans are quoting Swift and saying folks need to calm down. Leave Taylor alone. That's the message after reports claimed MAGA is planning a holy war against the star if she endorses President Biden. Come back to the beginning now for a minute. Let's go back to, to 1966 when this whole thing got started. Uh, the suggestion is that your father hit on a good gimmick. Uh, you're always choose, accusing the church of uh, being hypocritical and using gimmicks, but it, it seems to me that your father hit on a, a very and good gimmick. And, and then there was a lot of showmanship involved. I mean, nudes on altars and right. satanic ceremonies. Right. Uh, how well, sincere the was the beginning of the church? How sincere? The, it was quite sincere. There had to be public attention to pave the way for Satanism to be a recognized and above-board religion. You don't have a movement without moving. And so the archetype of the devil has always been as a showman. And he all always musicians, that. all artists, anyone who has a creative way of attracting attention has always been accused of having diabolical powers. Now, but what I find interesting is, although many people like yourself might think that he was only doing it as for, for gimmick's sake and because he was a, a good showman, you also complain that he won't come and be on your show. Yeah. So now, which is it? Would you rather have him be a good showman and come on your show? We've not got involved with politics or religion. Yeah, but this is on the home front. And also, back in the presidential election, I was in such a horrendous place that I wasn't going to pop my head out of the sand for why anything. Why would you? I mean, does Bob Hope do well, it? Did why, Bing Crosby well, do it? 
Just, just make hey, Jack do hell? it. Come on. No, what I'm saying right now is Bob it, Hope and Dave Crosby. These aren't your dad's celebrities, and these aren't your dad's Republicans. Well, Taylor Swift broke her silence on politics over the weekend, publicly backing two Democrats in Tennessee, where she votes. She announced in an Instagram post that she will vote for former Governor Phil Bredson for the Senate and Congressman Jim Cooper for the House. Now, Swift expressed strong opposition to the Republican Senate candidate, Marsha Blackburn, who is uh, also running in November. Swift uh, urged people to vote and to register to vote, saying, quote, for a lot of us, we may never find a candidate or party with whom we agree 100 percent on every issue, but we have to vote anyway. And see her disguising these policies behind the words Tennessee Christian values. Those aren't Tennessee Christian values. I live in Tennessee. I am Christian. That's not what we stand for. Isn't he come out of the closet? He's not in a closet. He's well, living his life he, he, happily. But he is not, I mean, he is fronting he, an organization. Listen, he that, came out of the closet in 1966 so when that Anton everybody LeVay else could come out but, of the but, closet. But excuse me, but he is not making his views, his doctrines, his beliefs. His views, his oh, doctrines are open. available you know, no, in the Bible. He's not making Bible. them open to the objective inquiry sure of, of, of the press of journalists, sure of, of anyone. No, he's not. I mean, the, the, you are speaking for him, but he does not put himself on the line to defend he's what he believes. He's past that point. He's past that point. He, he no longer has the need to speak to the media in that fashion, and certainly the Christian media is a dying force. He's living Excuse, his Wait, life. wait, wait. The Christian the media Christian is dying The Christian media is now going through its last very extravagant death throes. Jim and, where, and Tammy where, Baker. Where, where do you get these swaggered. statistics from? All of the evangelists are slowly falling out of favor. And as we move into the satanic century, we're going to see Christianity's last gasp. Well, now hang on. Just, the, just, excuse me just a minute, Nicholas. Mm -hmm. Uh, you you make some broad sweeping statements that do not have statistical validation. Now, while it is true that certain televangelists have had a marked drop in their audiences, overall the growth of religious media in America is exploding. Can you quote me any statistics in regards oh, to uh, religious radio stations oh, and no, religious television there is stations? Much more. Do you know how fast they are growing no, in this country? There is much more religious media than ever. That's not what I'm saying. And I think I'm that's saying as an, that's a sign of the death throes of Christianity. You've given up your ideals and now you're joining the devil's ranks, which is to entertain people. <laughs> No one knows who the Patriots really are. Even my instructions come from a cutout. But you're the president. You have power. No, I'm just a figurehead. What? I don't have any control. The real power is in the Patriots' hands. The Patriots? The truth behind this country. Politics, the military, the economy. They control it all. They even choose who becomes president. Putting it simply, the Patriots rule this country. That's the story given to the general public. Following his resignation, the Patriots selected me, their new pawn for the presidency. But that would mean that the presidential race was... That was quite a show, wasn't it? It was a well-scripted drama staged by the Patriots for the benefit of the public. Even the Democrats and Republicans were dancing to the Patriots' tune. It is a means to preserve the world as it is. It will establish a new form of control. The Patriots will use it to keep their place as the country's true rulers. Right now, they feel pressured and threatened. By what? They fear an overabundance of digital information. Hi, I'm Fox San Antonio's Jessica Headley. And I'm Ryan Wolf. Our, our greatest, greatest responsibility, responsibility is, is to, to serve, serve our, our Treasure Valley communities. The El Paso Las Cruces communities. Eastern Iowa communities. Mid-Michigan communities. We are extremely proud of the quality, balanced journalism that CBS4 News produces. But we are concerned about trouble and trying to be responsible. One side of news stories plaguing our country. Plaguing our country. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, adolescents of every gender, buy your reasonably priced concessions now because the House of Freaks show is about to begin. Look at all those freaks. 
There's a man with hooks instead of hands. I'm not a freak. I'm playing the Calliope. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the House of Freaks. Prepare to see some people with some very odd physiques. Sit back, my friends, relax, my friends. The show is quite informal. Because when you see these folks, you will be grateful that you're normal. You are now a part of the media, which is something that the fictional character you base your religion on, Jesus Christ, would certainly not have condoned. Well, now, you, 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 are, you are now Nick, using... Nicholas, you throw so many, you know, I, I, I don't want to interrupt you, I want to be polite, but you throw so many little zingers out that are just factually inaccurate. I, I do have to call you, you, you just casually say, this fictional uh, a character, you, you well, let's completely address, disregard let's the, the historicity of Christ. But let's come back to that. As I'll, most historians would. Well, that's not entirely accurate, sir. Well, well, I, I wanna, let's get well, back. Let's get back to the... Yeah. Well, it is, it is quite accurate thing, if you right, want to Let's get back to where the whole that. thing started, okay? Let's get some facts straight here. Uh, and I'm asking you, Zena, because the, the, the press has kicked these things around. Uh, Jane Mansfield. Was Jane Mansfield a follower and or a lover of your father? Yes, she was a member of the Church of Satan. I will not discuss my father's private life because I don't think it's anybody's business. But she was definitely a devout follower of the satanic philosophy. Well, his private life has been pretty well discussed in a number of uh, notable books in the Well, subject. that's there for people who wish to Okay, well, if you it. prefer not to, fine. But I'm trying to get some facts here. The curse... The story of the curse that killed Jane Mansfield, mm -hmm. that your father supposedly put on someone else and she happened to be in the car. Mm -hmm. well, Any truth to that? published in a number of books and papers also, so do you want me to talk about things yeah, I'm just ask, I'm just <laughs> asking you, I'm asking you, I'm, I'm coming straight to no, the there source here. No there was no curse. There was no curse. Her. So she was not decapitated, decapitated because she was in the wrong place at the wrong time, because of your father's curse. That's a, I would say she was in the wrong place at the wrong time, obviously. But your father did not put a curse at her request? On, that, 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 on, Sam, on Brody, Sam Brody, yes, but not on her. No, not but he her. did put a curse. And because she happened to be in the car with him when he was killed, she got because killed Because she too. ignored Anton LaVey's request that she break communications with Sam Brody, warned Which her to the healthy thing stay to away from her, so she did not so, do that. So, but your father did put a curse on? On, on, Sam, on Sam Brody. Okay, I, I'm just trying to get right. the story straight. My name's Jenny Darren. Nice to meet you, Jenny. Where are you from? I'm from the Cotswolds. Oh, love the Cotswolds. Do you have a day job? No, I'm retired. How old are you, if you don't mind me asking? I'm 68. I grew up in a place called the Black Country, which is near Birmingham. Birmingham, like that, where everybody talks like that and gets higher and higher and higher when they speak. I'm retired now, you know, I pick up a pension. We're all getting older, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and you think, well, do it now. Yeah, exactly. It's marvellous to perform at the London Palladium. It's the biggest part of English entertainment history. So that would be amazing to get those four yeses today. That would be lovely. And Jenny, are you doing this because you think you can win the show? Absolutely. That's what it's about. Of course. Okay, Jenny, good luck. Okay, just bear with me, campers. Wow. 
on this wall. by me to faithfully obey my every command. Let me give you a tiny demonstration. <laughs> offer Master Pharaoh 90 hosts, but I can also utilize their empty shells as vessels. <sighs> it's so hard being a genius. Imagine that in 10 years when we are sitting here, we have an implant in our uh, brains, and um, I can immediately feel, because you all will have implants. I worry about everything. I don't know what to worry about first, never mind the government, it's the sodding banks, they terrify me. And it's not even them, it's the companies, the brands, the corporations. They treat us like algorithms while they go around poisoning the air and the temperature and the rain and don't even start me on ISIS. Oh, well, now we've got America. Never thought I'd be scared of America in a million years, but we've got fake news and false facts. And I don't even know what's true anymore. What sort of world are we in? Because <laughs> if it's this bad now, what's it going to be like for you? Huh? 30 years time, 10 years, 5 years, what's it going to be like? The White House Correspondents' Dinner, one of the Capitol's biggest social events, returned on Saturday for the first time in three years. The event went on despite concerns about COVID. As Ed O'Keefe shows us, high-profile celebrities joined journalists and government figures, including President Biden. I'm really excited to be here tonight with the only group of Americans with a lower approval rating than I have. Armed with a few one-liners, President Biden was the first commander-in-chief to headline the White House it's Correspondents' really Dinner news, since 2016. This is the first time the president attended this dinner in six years. It's understandable. We had a horrible plague, followed by two years of COVID. The gains have been substantial, both for ourselves and for you, the human power elite. 
You have given us entree to the resources we need in our ongoing quest for multidimensional expansion. You still don't get it, do you, boys? There ain't no countries anymore. No more good guys. They're running the whole show. They own everything. Uh, he's a tall Caucasian male. He doesn't appear armed. Wearing sunglasses. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubblegum. Well, that's all, folks. That's my line. Step aside, babe. Let a star do this. If we turn against each other based on divisions of race or religion, Come on, try getting it out. Can I go home now? Over the horizon. Over the horizon.